Hey fellow fishing fanatic, so you finally bought a trolling motor for your kayak, but now you're left wondering what the heck battery do I run with it? Well, lucky for you, I've tested several of these batteries that I've got with me, all of these batteries that I've got with me actually, and I'll give you a few other insights into what you probably should be looking at in regards to a specific trolling motor battery. You know, you've got other batteries for your electronics that I run and other things like that, but this is specifically for a trolling motor battery. Let's get into it. My name is Wesley Littlefield with anglers.com and I've been kayak fishing for several years now and I've been running a trolling motor on my kayak for most of those years actually. And I've tested out the new lithium ion batteries, I've tested out AGM batteries, and I've tested out the good old trusty just deep cycle marine batteries. I forget what they're called exactly. But I have to say that there's certain things that you've got to look at when choosing a battery and that's what we're going to talk about today. You can find some of these batteries in the description down below where you can purchase them. It gives us a little bit of a commission at no extra cost to you and we really appreciate you when you support the channel in that way. Otherwise, let's get into a review. All right, we're going to start on my left and work my left to right just to keep it simple. This interstate battery, it's great if you want a lot of power and you've got extra weight to give up. So if your kayak can hold a bunch of extra weight, this is the battery to get. It's a, I believe it's a 100 amp hour battery. And like I said, I, I've ran multiple miles on this and still had plenty of battery left over after running, you know, for, I think it was like four miles total. And it might've been at like 80% or something ridiculous. So if you need a whole lot of power, it's great for that. And because it's a lead acid battery, it's a lot cheaper than a lithium ion battery, but it's also a lot heavier, like I said. So pros and cons, this is probably one of the cheapest 100 amp hour batteries you're gonna find, but so far I really like it. I haven't run it a lot. I actually borrowed it from my grandpa, and so I don't run it a lot, but if I need to make a long haul, I'll throw it in the kayak and go and not have to worry about it for multiple days. On end. Let's move to another battery. This is also an interstate battery, oddly enough, but as you can tell, it's a lot smaller. This is a 35 amp hour, whereas this one's 100 amp hours. I got it because it's small and compact. It's still a little bit heavy, but not crazy heavy. This is also an AGM battery, where this is a lead acid battery. The difference is AGMs are a little bit lighter. They're supposed to last a little bit longer and you don't have to worry about filling them up like you do with a traditional lead acid battery. This is a completely sealed battery, so it's supposed to be lower maintenance. So that's why I went ahead and got this one. Now, 35 amp hours just isn't enough for me running a trolling motor. I've ran out of juice with this battery on multiple occasions and had to paddle back to the ramp. So it's not my favorite battery and I definitely won't be buying another 35 amp hour battery. Now, as far as another AGM battery goes, I might buy, but they're still pretty heavy. I mean, even as small as this one is, it's probably closer about 20 pounds. So yeah, that doesn't sound like a lot, but for a little bitty battery like this, it's a lot of weight because really you need at least, I would say a minimum of 50 amp hour battery to really get a good day's use out of your trolling motor on your kayak. But that said, it's kind of in between price. It's a step up above lead acid as far as price and you know being much less maintenance and all that stuff. So expect to spend a little bit more on an AGM kind of battery. But the latest and greatest is actually lithium batteries. And this little battery, yes, it's only a 23 amp hour. And technically I won't use this one for my trolling motor, but I'm getting a bigger one. I would not recommend this battery specifically for a trolling motor because it's only 23 amp hours. And like I said, you know, this 35 doesn't even last me half a day. This one definitely wouldn't last me enough, but there's bigger models that I would use. And I am in the process of buying, just saving up enough money to get a bigger one here, but I can get twice amount of power you know, I, I can get a hundred amp, even a hundred amp hour, and it'll weigh maybe as much as this one. So that's the benefits of going with lithium. You get a lot more power in a smaller, more compact, lighter package. And it's just, it's 
better for kayak fishing. Hands down, period. I always recommend a lithium battery unless you don't want to spend a bunch of money because lithium batteries are expensive. I think this little battery, it's smaller than this battery, less power, everything, but it almost costs twice as much as this battery because it's a lot lighter. It's got a lot more benefits in my opinion. This one has a battery management system built into it. So if it goes to overheat, it automatically shuts itself down. You don't got to worry about it exploding and, you know, causing a terrible accident on the water. So that's why I went with specifically Dakota Lithium, but there's other lithium batteries that are cheaper on the market that you can get. But I tend to say I would rather, you know, if I'm gonna spend the money on the lithium, I'm gonna go ahead and get the best of the best. In my opinion, that's Dakota Lithium, period. Now when buying a trolling motor battery, it's important to always look at the amp hours and the dimensions of the battery. So amp hours just basically means how long is it gonna run? If it's 100 amp hours, that means it can draw, or your trolling motor can draw 100 amps for one hour. Now, most trolling motors are not gonna draw anywhere near 100 amps. I think mine might draw like, I don't even wanna lie to you, but it's more like two, three, and then it draws less if you you know are running it on a lower setting. So I'm probably lying to you when I said that. I haven't checked it lately, but most trolling motors aren't gonna draw 100 amps in one hour. So that's why, you know, generally a 100 amp hour battery is gonna last you all day and the next day and maybe even into the next day. But that's one thing I really focus on is the amp hours and also the dimensions is another thing. As you can tell, this one's really big and these are a lot smaller. This one's even, I mean, super compact. This one's pretty compact as well. So in a kayak, you're limited on space. You wanna think about the dimensions and you wanna think about weight. This one weighs a ton and a half. And it's not fun lugging it from the truck to the kayak. And then, you know, if you're stuck paddling, that's just that much extra weight that you gotta haul and I'm not a fan of it. Same with this one. This one's a lot lighter. It's not nearly as bad to run as this one, you know. It's about half the weight, probably should be a little bit less. So it's not as bad, but I would much rather haul around this one than this one or this one. It's just a crazy amount of weight difference in lithium batteries. So those are the three main things that I focus on besides price. Obviously, you know, you're gonna get cheaper with a lead acid battery and a little bit more expensive with an AGM battery and then the most expensive with the lithium, but I think the lithium brings the most benefits, therefore it's worth paying more for. Now there's all kinds of other brands out here as far as batteries go. They're all, you know, generally about the same from what I can tell. I haven't got to test out all of them. I would love to, but I haven't got to do that yet. If I do, I will make an updated video and I'll, you know, put it in a card right here. That way you can check it out. But until then, now that you've got your trolling motor picked out, you've got a battery picked out, it's time to mount that trolling motor. And if you bought a trans mount trolling motor, there's a video down below me right now that's gonna show you how to mount it very fast, very easy, and it's worth checking out. Until then, I want you to always remember that education is important, but fishing is essential.